Pals, I think you're really going to enjoy this video. If you do, please hit the like and subscribe button and comment button. It really helps out. All right, The Rock had something to say about the uh, Trump would-be assassination. Let's all tune in. What was your reaction when you saw the president being assassinated? Do you remember where you were? When you saw the what now? It happened, and what was the immediate reaction to you, the assassination attempt? Yes, I was up in Vancouver, Canada, and we were filming a movie, and I got home, and Vancouver. There you go. Now, bear in mind, Ro The Rock went from endorsing uh, Kamala, uh, I'm sorry, endorsing Biden and Kamala in 2020 to, I guess he's not endorsing anyone this year? Here's my theory. Here's my theory. I have nothing to base this off of, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. My theory is that because the economy was still struggling under Biden and Kamala for a little bit, I'll bet you anything he blames Biden and Kamala for Black Adam bombing. I can't tell you why. I have nothing to back this up whatsoever. I have nothing to back this up, but I feel like that's what's going on. Think about it, guys, because he was hyping up Black Adam for months, man. He was hyping up the character. He was like the, the hierarchy of power in the DCEU. It's about to change. And he was he was like trying to force his way into the DC universe as like the top most powerful character. He bugged the suits to, to get a Henry Cavill cameo in his film. Shazam guy was like trying to get involved but rock didn't want anything to do with that guy and then the movie ended up like breaking even at best and i'll bet you i will bet you anything that he blames biden and kamala for the uh like global economic downturn i'll bet you anything maybe not anything i don't think i bet my life on it but i think that's what's going on here i got home turned on the news and well first i hit my phone turned on the news and i saw that my reaction was this is not who we are and i hated that this is who we have become on this day. That was my reaction. Yeah, there's no we. Who's the we? I didn't take part in any of this. I had nothing to do with this guy or the other guy before him. I had nothing to do with it. Black Adam was like bad. It wasn't terrible, but it was just, you know, not great. Aren't most WWE wrestling people kind of pro-Trump? You know who's not? And it shocked me is Big Sexy. Kevin Nash. Diesel is super woke. He's like a super, he's a big old lib. What, what was the... the when you saw the blood, hand up, American flag, did it give you any, like, did you get any feeling of, you know, this is great to see a leader standing up after that? Did you get any kind of mojo like that or? Yes. I mean, I just, I felt like a centimeter in a different direction or less, that would have been a different story. And the fact that he came up out of that, that was a big deal. And that was a big, I think, regardless of who it was, whether you love Donald, you don't love Donald. I'll tell, I'll tell you my reaction. The only thing I cared about, literally the only thing I was like, ooh, how's this gonna impact the election? I'm just not, I, you know, he's not, he doesn't deserve anyone's sympathy, I don't think. He, he was just literally last week, seven days ago, he was making fun of Paul Pelosi, again. I cared about the assassination attempt. I thought it would, I mean, it, guys, it would have been so bad for this country. If the guy, the first guy was ultimately successful, you know, if it, it if it had been a moment sooner or a moment later and, and Trump gets killed in that situation, it would have been terrible for this country. It probably would have galvanized the MAGA movement and bolstered their chances to not only win the presidency, whoever took over, I mean, I guess it would have been Vance, right? But it would have bolstered their chances to uh, hold the House, take back the Senate, and, and it would have just made Trump a martyr. And I have no doubt that we can and will beat him and his movement again. And that's just way healthier for a democracy. Way healthier. I just think it would have been a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. But does he deserve an ounce of sympathy? No, of course not. Somebody tried to assassinate him, and there's no room for that. And yes. And despite it being who we were in that moment, I still believe in my core, that is not who we are as a country. Him standing up in that moment, you wanted to see that. Donald Trump is one of the most incendiary, dishonest, divisive politician in history. Or rather, I guess more specifically, American history. He has a not so insignificant part to play in how polarized things have become. He's just a chaos agent. He obfuscates, he lies, he whips his support base, his base of support into a frenzy about lies. He's currently telling them now that Kamala is cheating. He's preemptively preparing his supporters for a loss in November and doing the same thing he did in 2020 by blaming it on fraud, baseless accusations.
Seth Meyers put together a reel of la a reel last night of Trump's extreme rhetoric against Biden and Kamala. It goes on for a few minutes. Let's give it a gander. Point is, I think it's high time. We learned a lesson from this man. You heard J.D. Vance. Stop calling your opponents fascists who will destroy the country if they win. Kamala Harris is the first major party nominee in American history who fundamentally rejects freedom and embraces Marxism, communism, and fascism. We will root out the communists, Marxists, fascists, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. She's a Marxist. She's a fascist. Joe is weak. He's only good at cheating on elections, but it's not him. He's surrounded by fascists. Biden and his band of Marxist, communist, fascists. Joe Biden is the puppet of left-wing extremists trying to erase our borders, eliminate our police indoctrinate our children vilify our i mean it's gotten worse you know it's just gotten worse now he's out there accusing biden and maybe they'll get to that in the sizzle reel, reel that they put together but he's out there accusing biden of intentionally allowing fentanyl into the country how many people die from fentanyl overdoses uh every year now he is accusing biden in in essence of like genociding appalachia you know what i mean he accuses biden of intentionally allowing fentanyl in so that it can kill Americans. And he says it so flippantly. He says it so flippantly. Uh, brother, that's not even the top 50 craziest things he's ever said. I mean, I feel like that one is underappreciated. I feel like that one doesn't get enough attention. I mean, think of how think of how crazy that is to accuse someone of doing, of, so, of a, allowing a deadly drug to come into the country and kill tens of thousands of people every month. How many people are dying from fentanyl overdoses a month in, in America? They have gone down thanks to efforts by the White House. That's something that happened that they, that they did. They launched a program to try to bring these deaths down and they did. The new data show overdose deaths involving opioids decreased from an estimated 84,000 in 2022 to 81,000 in 2023. So this is, you know, tens of thousands of people dying every month from drugs like fentanyl. And Trump regularly accuses Biden of intentionally allowing it to happen. Heroes take away our energy, destroy our Second Amendment, attack the right to life, and replace American freedom with left-wing fascism. Left-wing, we're going left-wing all the way. Fascists, they are fascists. If <laughs> he does that, that's his patented move. When he, when he really messes up a word, he likes to recover by doing stuff like that. You know, everyone's talking about the fascism. He'll do like a little kind of like, Kamala's trying to do fascism. Every, you know, the left wing, they love the fascism. And then he goes back on the um, teleprompter. Of course, left wing fascism is a oxymoron, but never mind that. I just, you know, why, why, why do we, and you want me to give Donald Trump credit for standing up and putting his fist in the air after somebody tried to take a shot at him and just ignore everything else he's done in this country to make things so explosive? No, this is ridiculous. It was an important moment for everybody to see, regardless of who it was, for that person to stand up. We were half an inch away from having chaos. All it would have been, yes, we would have been in shambles if yes. that that shot would have hit him. Uh, do you have a Donald Trump story with wrestling? Oh. But everybody has a. Do you have a Trump story? Or, <laughs> yes. What's your Trump story? Well, the, oh, Trump. He used to come watch me wrestle all the time in yeah. Madison Square Garden. Yeah, and it was great. Last for, last time, first time I saw him though. I said, let me see the eyebrow. I said, you got it. There it is. <laughs> 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 that's cool so he was he was a fan he, he watched you as a fan oh huge yes yeah. yeah that's cool he used to come to the madison square garden all the time big sports fan yeah if there's one thing you're going to get from this interview with the rock and i we both love america we had two big flags at our i mean yeah i just i i, I really don't think donald trump deserves any credit for standing up and just raising a fist you know what i mean